there are some new formats that we could use designed for interoperability that actually share a whole lot more intelligence about what we've got and what we're trying to share, which is in the right-hand column. It's quite a difference between the sort of the traditional approach and where we could be going. And now, I'd probably get into the nub of what I think is um, some of the messages I'm, I'm sharing and discussing with information architects around the place. It's about this, the heart of interoperability, and first of all, starting out with adopting those international standards I alluded to before when we're looking at the world. And these are the standards for standards that give us guidance on how to describe geographic features and how to put that information into a computer system. And they give us patterns to inherit. And the first thing that we do when we're thinking about what sort of information we want to share in an open way and completely and very well described way is to, to map it into an information model. And that's what's illustrated by that little diagram here. It's actually something that's human readable, believe it or not, but the people who know how to use that type of notation, that graphical notation, know that that's a, effectively a mathematical representation of everything that everybody wants to share. Very precisely described. More precisely described than you can describe in English or any other spoken language. It's a graphical notation that accurately describes exactly these are the things I want to share. These are the attributes, these are the relationships between them. These might even be the behaviours of those types of things. The types of things you can think about, anything that you like. This building, you know, all the objects in the city, you know, the, the terrain of New Zealand, the seafloor, all of that can be described for. Typically, we, we've got to scope this up to something manageable. It'll be amongst a community. Like, all the folk who want to share maybe address information. This describes what the address information would be in such a model. And then we take it one step further. We move that model, which is designed for us to understand, or the, the people wanting to share stuff, and put it into a machine-readable form in extensible markup language, XML. You may have heard of XML. And there's a version of XML specifically for describing location information, geographic information. That's what computers can make sense of. Lots of sense of. Okay. Manipulate it really, really well. I just hark back to the earlier slides about all those um, percentages of folk manipulating stuff and you know, having difficulty working out what things are. Here's a way that um, machines can start to uh, transact information and make, make sense, sense of complex information. Information that's got geometry in it, lots of different geometries perhaps, lots of different attributes, lots of different characteristics. Now that, that little train there, that little, those little <coughs> steps shown on that slide, is what a particular community might do. Like I said before, the folk interest may be in address data, it might be in place data, it might be in seabed information. Like the folk from IHO have developed a standard for hydrographic so those are the steps they go through. And then, so would another community. If they were going to take the standards approach, do the same sort of thing. And they'd come up with their particular definition of the data. The trick is, if there's a piece of that model that already exists somewhere, the trick is to just inherit it, to copy the patterns. And exactly the same, the Linux community uses the same pattern, the same logic, if they happen to be dealing with the same sorts of objects. So their community starts describing things the same way. And so on for the next community and the next community. We've got lots of different descriptions of complex geographic information developed by different communities, but all following the same approach. What that means is we then get a whole family of machine-readable definitions of geographic information which can be shared now across Domains, you know, this particular science community, you know, dealing with hydrology, starting to share information with, I don't know, some folk that are dealing with mesh blocks or land parcels or addresses. That's, this is a, an ambition, right? This is the further down the track in terms of what spatial data infrastructure is trying to enable. But we have to grasp some sort of feeling for why folk are getting excited about 
the world being different in three years time, five years time, 10 years time, because these technologies are coming of age. These approaches, these techniques. And we are beginning in the geospatial office to try to initially just, just produce some initial guidance on introductory guidance on how to begin a journey towards taking on some of these ideas, putting information up to the web, making it possible for other computers to discover and drag down into their application environments. And this is the idea of the strategy of four years ago turning into a concept of a spatial data infrastructure that has some of these components working in it. And um, one of the things I'd just like to say is, is that this kind of intervention is adding, uh, you could conceptualize it as another layer or something in between what we, what we have in-house, our, our computer systems, databases and so on, that you're not gonna change those overnight, but getting a way to map the information, the important information that people want to share, use, or have other folk repurpose for something that we don't even imagine how they're going to use it. To get it out of our databases and into the, into, onto the web where it can be used easily without any reference back to us because it's described in this machine readable way. So the, this kind of intervention, the impact would be, first of all, how do we build this kind of infrastructure? Secondly, trans translators from our existing databases, mappings to get the data to map from our existing databases into these new shared data models, these XML schemes that we use. This is how the interoperability happens between machines. And here's an example, this is a, this is a complex diagram, but it's one um, that tries to explain, across the bottom, if you like, you've got the existing data sets, like the big drum in the middle there. Left, left alone. Think of this, the stuff on top this, is the stuff that relates to um, an SDI. And going back to the New Zealand um, strategy, which talks about governance, we've got governance down here. It talks about data. Data quality improvements have got to happen down here. If you're going to, you know, the custodian of the data set, you have to, to deal with that. But in terms of the, the, the data that's shared that's going to be made available for repurposing is, is discussed here, this layer here. These are these. These, this, these, these uh, models and data schemas are uh, what become really important here. Agreed by the community that's going to openly share this stuff. Um, accessibility through web services, there's particular interfaces and interface standards that have been developed internationally, which deal with the accessibility issues, including registries and catalogues, heard about metadata and putting it into um, special databases that allow you to find stuff. And the, you know, the LINS data service is, is an example of one way of finding information. And there are web services attached to that. So there's some learnings to get on how, how this works. And when it comes to the interoperability pillar of our New Zealand strategy, all of this is about interoperability. And all of these components need various forms of governance and policy to make sure that they stand up robustly. Yes, every infrastructure needs to be put together quite robustly. And even here, I'll just highlight modeling tools are an important part of that as well. Um, so, what it's really about is um, interoperability, it's really about collaboration. There's a snip from our our place plan sitting on the top there because this truly is what um, this this needs serious collaboration to achieve this kind of infrastructure. 